What's cooking, Juventus fans? Welcome back to your old lady's favorite YouTube channel. Juventus have mathematically, and really for all intents and purposes, qualified for the Champions League for next season. We can breathe a sigh of relief as we don't have to worry if uh, like we will end up getting that last point that we needed <laughs> to finish up the season. But what does that mean for the future of Juventus? What does that mean now that we can focus on the Mercado outside of, of course, the Copa Italia? Stick with us. We'll talk about it now. We'll fill you in. Ciao ragazzi, welcome back to the Bianca Dairy Zone. My name is Justin Sofro. Today, it's Monday, May 2nd, 2022. And of course, I've got your latest rundown of all things Juventus, all the news that you care about each and every day. Obviously, we start out talking about how Juventus have qualified for the Champions League, at least finishing in fourth place. Maybe they can do some, uh, I don't want, it doesn't even need to be magic, but just maybe just some uh, leap to, through some hurdles to overtake Napoli. Maybe we'll get a little good feeling third place instead of fourth. I, not that it really matters, to be honest. Um, probably if, if, if it's me being uh, realistic, I'd probably just say rest the whole team because we see enough injuries anyway. Rest everybody, play the youth who actually want to play um, outside of those that are trying to compete and trying to move the U23 of Juventus from City C to City B. We'll see what happens there. Anyway, I guess we can jump into it. We're really going to, um, we got enough news to talk about, but at least Juventus have successfully made it in the top four uh, before the final, you know, the final day of the season. And we're not biting our nails like we were last season. Um, if you haven't already, please hit that like button, smash the subscribe button, and hit that bell icon to stay notified for all of our latest videos. Now I'll just jump into it. All right, the very first news story of the day is that about Juventus wanting to make a big move in this Mercado. Uh, Guido Vacaggio, and I apologize, I probably butchered it, uh, with Tudo Sport uh, pointed out saying that Juventus are planning to have a major purchasing campaign this summer. I think there are four signings. It'll be a central defender a left back, a midfielder, and a winger. Obviously, we know um, the different rumors that have been thrown out there for each of these positions. Um, the central defender actually is being more and more uh, more sought after, especially given that uh, Chiellini could very well retire at the end of the season or move to the MLS should he want to. Um, all eyes, though, on that midfielder. It's got to be a big one. It's got to be a big get, if you're asking me. I don't think Juventus can uh, settle for anything less than that right now. Uh, we'll see about the winger and the left back as well. Let's continue on. Uh, going off of some of the news stories with some midfielders that Juventus are linked with, let's talk about Milinkovic Savic. Uh, lately, uh, there have been some rumors out there. And before I actually get to this piece, let me give you the preliminary information, which is yesterday there was a news report out there, basically reporting saying uh, that um, Kesman, quoting his uh, Milinkovic Savic's um, agent, saying that Kesman said that it is between is Man United. That Man United are the ones that he wants to go to. He's chosen Man United. It'll be that. Well, that seems to not be true. As Kesman spoke with Mirko Di Natale to clear the air. Basically saying, it's big fake news. I have never given interviews in the last period. Some journalists are really unbelievable. I'm very angry. This is a lack of respect towards me, towards Sergei, and towards uh, Lazio. So basically just saying it's absolutely ridiculous. Why would he say anything like that? Uh, why would, you know, also it doesn't make sense to me. If we're being honest, it doesn't make sense for, uh, for Kesman to come out and say that it's Man United. He wants to go to Man United. It's a done deal because it doesn't make sense. You have three parties that want him. He potentially could want to go to Juventus. He potentially could also want to go to PSG. It doesn't do him any good to not have a bidding war between those three teams. If he wants to make money and he wants to make a, a you know a better salary, there you go. You, you who's going to get bring the best offer to the table? As well as you know, if you're Lazio, you wouldn't want that either because you would want to see who would actually end up bringing in the most money uh, for the sale of the player. Uh, anyway, just some ridiculousness. Let's clear the air. It's not done. It's not a done deal. Juventus are still in the running for him. We'll see what happens there. Let's continue on and talk about that, actually, though, as Giovanni Albanese had a, a report basically just saying that Malinkovic would like to stay in Italy. The interest of Juve is there, and he would like Juve, but the negotiations at the moment are not easy because there would be several obstacles to overcome. However, there is still time. The Mercado has yet to get underway. Uh, what he means with that, obviously, you know what the hurdles are. You know it's Lazio and more more. more um, importantly, it's Little Tito in his relationship with Juventus, um, the money not really wanting to better one of their um, direct rivals, you could say. But let's get, let's not get ourselves 
Lazio, you're not right there being a rival right now. You're a little bit below it, and I say that as a Juventus team that's not at the top of what they usually are. Um, they're still they're, yeah, obviously it could have gotten dangerous there at the end if they kept winning and Juventus kept lo- losing. Didn't happen right now, but either way, either way, I understand Lotito does not want to um, improve Juventus's stock right now if he if he doesn't have uh, doesn't have to. But at the same time, we do know that Milinkovic Savage wants to come to Juventus, mainly because he wants to come to Turin, uh, because his brother is playing at Torino. Um, there's a lot of bonuses there. Playing at Juventus, obviously, one of the top clubs in the world, would be great for him as well. We'll, we'll continue to follow that and see what, um, how that develops. Though, if, if, if personally speaking, just my own biases or whatever, if Juventus can get Milinkovic Savage, you do whatever you can to get this deal done. And when I, not, okay, I know some people are going to read too much into that and say, I'm going to say pay whatever. No, that's not what I mean. But do whatever you can feasibly and what makes sense to sign this player. He is about as good as it gets when it comes to the midfield. Other midfield options, though, we'll talk about here. Uh, Days and Natalia was talking um, overall about or, or giving a report when it comes to that of Frankie de Jong, saying that Juventus are in a moment of reflection that must not and cannot last long. If they want to get de Jong... The player is open to a move. Um, I, I don't know where this is coming from. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be honest. I mean, I know where it's coming from, uh, but at the same time, I don't know why it's so consistently being pushed about De Jong to Juventus or whatever here lately in the last couple of weeks. Because it seemed overall, again, I talk about this plenty of, t- plenty of times in the past, that in January, signing Zakaria meant De Jong doesn't really have a place at Juventus. Uh, not that they're equivalent, but when it comes to playing in the same area space and doing uh, same, similar things on, on, in the midfield, I think that's that's been the report, is that it, he doesn't seem like it's an option. But somebody, someone is out there, his agent or whoever it is, or maybe it's just somebody trying to you know ruff, ruffle some feathers or whatever have you, um, is trying to push the Juventus storyline. Maybe they're just trying to get him. You know, maybe it's just utilizing so you know Juventus for the for the pay raise for the um, you know whatever he wants to go to make sure he gets the money he gets. I don't know. I still don't fully believe in the um, De Jong option. I know a lot of people like De Jong. I'm I'm okay with him. I like him as well. But I still just don't. I just there's a part of me that just I can't buy fully into it. I don't believe um, the story right now. We'll see if it, if it continues to grow. But I still am not a believer. I am a believer in this one, though, and I know some people may not have uh, may be as excited as maybe somebody like me would be, but uh, or not 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 that I'm excited, but maybe wouldn't be as pro this move as as I am. Uh, but Nico Schietta is also reporting about Jorginho and his opportunity to potentially come to Juventus. Uh, says Jor- Jorginho can leave Chelsea in the summer transfer window. Juventus have shown interest and open talks with his agent uh, Yao Santos. The Redista asked for th- a three year contract. Um, I think at this point, uh, if I'm looking at what options Juventus has in the midfield, uh, I don't know how you know how much long term um, play really Jorginho has. Hopefully, he's still good. Uh, he seems like he's all right. Obviously, um, yes, he definitely rubbed me the wrong way when it came to um, some of those penalties uh, playing for the Azzurri. <laughs> but at the same time, um, I, I do like the, some of the, I do like what the player does on the field. I do like what he brings, and I think he would fit well with Allegri. But is he at the top of my list right now? No, it would, it would, it would again go Malinkovic, Savage, Pogba up there somewhere closer to him. Uh, then you would have the likes of Jorginho and Zaniolo, whoever. I know you don't, you guys aren't happy to hear Big Z, but I'm going to keep throwing Big Z in there uh, until I know that it's done. Um, anyway, that, that, those are my options right now that I would look at. it. I would still be definitely open, and I think Jorginho would definitely be more of a big splash get than some of these names that are being floated out there for Juventus. Um. Another option that's back on the table potentially for Juventus one that doesn't really excite me if we're being if I'm being honest. Tudor Sports reporting about Paredes saying that Juventus are ready to get serious for Paredes. Uh, the midfielder is much more than a hypothesis and can now become an opportunity for the Bianconeri. PSG continues to value him at 20 million euros, which is too much for Juve. Until last weekend, one acceleration after another has clearly opened the track. At the moment, they are studying the right strategy to spread his lavish, uh, his lavish salary around. We are talking about 7 million per season at Juve. This is the maximum ceiling. Um... Again, I, I'm not really going to comment too much on this one. Um, again, I'm not a, I'm not. It doesn't really excite me that much. But 80s coming into Juventus, uh, for being honest, I still, th- I don't think they need to pay him seven million euros. Um, if they can get him for a cheaper deal, maybe down the line. But as, as it stands right now, 
he would not be one of those names that I throw in with the other names when it comes to the midfield uh, that I would that I personally would go after. I know other people may disagree with me, um, but that's just my opinion, and that's what you get on the channel, right? All right, continue on. DiMarzio's talking about Juventus and maybe looking at a center back when it comes to their Mercado, saying that Juventus are looking for a defender, and Gabriel is at the top of the list. The club will try to uh, set up negotiations, also because Arsenal are interested in some Juve players, and this is this could be a good option for Juventus. I think he would be a good center back get that Juventus could add to the club, especially given potential departures of Chiellini as well as, you know, Benucci in his situation. He's getting older. Uh, you never know how many injuries are going to affect this uh, this area of the team. Um, I think this would be a better, a smarter option than that of like when they were look, when they were linked with Rudiger and about all of his money that he was asking about that. I think this is a much um, smarter way probably to go if you can end up working out some kind of deal there it's being that Arsenal are interested like they said and Juventus players maybe uh somebody that plays for Juve could end up going the other way I know they are definitely obviously interested in that of Archer right now all right, continuing on, Tudor Mercado Webb has another report, basically just giving about the situation with Chiesa, Juventus, buying him, whatever. Uh, with the mathematical qualification to the next Champions League, the obligation of redemption by Juventus for Federico Chiesa has been triggered. We knew Juventus were going to buy him regardless, but definitely now that they are um, in top four, they're going to be playing in Champions League. Um, those qualifications have been met. Juventus have to buy Federico Chiesa regardless. Again, they're going to. Um, Fiorentina will now be owed another 40 million euros plus 10 million euros in bonuses. So another 50 million euros will be going their way for the purchase of Federico Chiesa, um, which in the end is still a very good purchase uh, by the club. Finally, the last bit of news we have uh, for the day when it comes to Juventus-related news. Uh, Nico Schiera is reporting, saying that Torino have decided not to trigger the option to buy for Marco Piazza. Uh, the Croatian forward will return to Juventus. His contract currently expires in 2023 at the end of the season. So it's just another little aspect there um, in the Mercado that Juventus will have to figure out uh, where is Marco Piazza going. He'll probably go on loan somewhere, I'd imagine. Uh, maybe they'll try to sell him, see if they can get uh, some money out of him, especially given that his uh, contract runs up in 2023, you're not going to have a lot of time to make the money that they want to. Um, if they do, but again, it's not a um, this is not a big deal issue for Juventus. Uh, him coming back is not uh, significant enough to um, you know to trigger any worry that of like Aaron Ramsey, right? Anyway. That's the news we have for you today when it comes to Juventus, the latest happenings, uh, what will be happening in the Mercado coming up. But we still, while I understand we've, we've, you know, we've made it to Champions League, we don't have to worry about losing or missing out on Champions League next season, we still need to focus in on that Coppa Italia. Allegri, pressure's on. you got to win this. Uh, if not, it's still a pretty, a pretty big failure of a season if you don't win at least one trophy. Uh, and then we need to look into what it means for next season as well. Hopefully Juventus can get the job done in the upcoming match there uh, against the Inter in the Copa Italia final. Anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below about all the topics we talked about today. Do you like some of the players that were listed? Do you dislike any of them? Are there any ones that you're a hard no on? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you haven't already, please hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, hit that bell icon to stay notified. For all of our latest videos, make sure you follow Beyond Canary Zone at Beyond Canary Zone on Twitter and Instagram, and follow me at Justin Sofro. I'll see you guys next time. Forza Juve, Forza Beyond Canary.